it's Wednesday, uh, well, a little bit after 10. We had a delivery come in this morning and I needed to be out there to take care of that. Um, so here we are with relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons once again. Uh, today is not a submarine Wednesday. As I mentioned before in the stream, um, this whole stream started as just uh, showing people how we develop our dungeon tiles for our D&D &D campaign, and the sewer tiles are part of that. Um, apparently, the party is going to be going into the sewers, and so the stuff I've been working on off and on for the last, oh, three weeks or so, is going to become um, a location and a set for our characters to... I don't know, probably get into a whole lot of trouble and hopefully not die. So what I'm doing today, um, after I base coated these balls in um, gray and got the green wash on them, is I'm going to show you what the attempt is going to be. So I'm going to be trying to make this look like this. And I'll be doing that in two steps. One is to put a gray wash, a dark gray wash, on all of the gray blocks, front and back, so that they look, you know, more worn and uh, dirty. And then I'm going to use a black wash, a little heavier application of black wash to just kind of splush right along here above the green, like this, to make it look like that's the high water mark. And that's where the black mold grows, I guess. So that's a before and after. We'll see how I do. Um, these were base coated in a little bit darker gray than this, but the, the dark gray wash will darken up quite a lot. And then these corner pieces, you might recall there are a lot of those, are supposed to end up looking like this, the same sort of effect, with the gray wash on the blocks to make it look more, and then the black wash to make it look scummy. And then these are the sewer troughs. Yes, lots of tiles, lots and lots of tiles. Not quite as many as before, but enough. Um, this has a multi-step process. Is it supposed to end up looking like this? And so what happens is I get an umber or brown wash first around the edges, well, down the whole thing, actually, the center and around the edges. And then even more in the middle goes a black wash. And then this is epoxy. And I might just end up using the same thing. Um, just a little drizzle of epoxy goes down the center to represent the trickle of sewerage. So, yeah. Um, here's your befores and afters. And that's what I'm going to be working on today. Just like last Friday, I might go into overtime because we actually need to have these done sooner than later. Meaning, like, now. The word from my masters is, we need these now. Um, yeah, this is regular Wednesday. This is, unfortunately, not sub-Wednesday. This is sewer tile gets filthy Wednesday. Um, yeah, so the before and after, that's what I'll be working on as quickly as I can while still maintaining some semblance of quality control. So I'll be doing a flip here and then I'll be starting with the gray wash on the wall tiles. And while that's drying, okay, while that's drying, I'll be getting out the trough tiles and putting the brown wash on. All right. And then they both get black wash, so it makes sense. I'll go back to the walls and then finish these. And um, yeah, I hope to get all of that done. The two step process for each done today. Actually, I will get it done one way or the other, even if it takes me until like five tonight. Uh, what can I flip? Now I'm going to flip a, I'm going to flip a refractive green. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Oh, we'll do an extra one. Yeah, it was 
it was a good flipping thing. Um, yeah, the studio is set up a little differently. Well, I was away this weekend, and on Monday it looks like uh, some work was done to reset the camera and the cable. Anyway, yeah. Um, can still get most of my stuff done on camera. I'm going to put some gloves on because I'm going to be holding these things. I'm going to be holding them down on the green part and the splish in the black, the gray wash all over everything. So it'll be getting on my hands. And then I'll be giving the dark gray wash, which is the one I'll be using on the walls, the upper part of the walls. Give that a really good stir to make sure that the uh, pigment is well distributed in the solvent. And we'll go to it, and I'll be moving along fairly quickly because there's just a lot to do. So the ones I've got up here are a little bit, that's a little bit less than half of the total. The nice thing about doing these sewer tiles is that they're supposed to look kind of scuzzy. So I can be fairly quick and I don't have to worry about getting the wash on very evenly. In fact, when it comes time to do the high water mark, as you can see from the sample here, um, we wanted the two intentionally be kind of scabby looking. So that might just fit just right into the skill level. Now let's just get started. Aphorisms for management, because I was actually in management at one point in my life, was you can't finish unless you get started. So the thing I'm trying to do here is to make sure it gets down into the spaces, the mortar spots, okay? We don't want those to be lighter than um, yep so that's the deal get this stuff on here make it look darker make it look a little splotchy and then later I'll be doing a black wash a little heavy black wash right along this demarcation line. I'm putting them over on the drying rack here. Um, just so have some room to work with. So last week, Friday, I spent a good deal of time talking about ancient uh, television technology. You know, not in great detail because I was not a television specialist, but, you know, from the experience of a television user at the time. You know, tube testers, rooftop antennae, the demise of an entire tens of thousands of jobs, probably, um, as a result of going to cable instead of um, rooftop antenna. That was no doubt devastating to a lot of people. I'm not sure, you know, if the number of cable installers re was sufficient to replace the number of antenna installers and maintenance people we had. It certainly was different work, you know, and I don't know. I don't know if the people who installed antennas, what they went down to do. 
but the work became very different. You know, instead of going up on a roof, look at both sides. I want to make sure I didn't miss. Yeah, okay. Thanks to spending a lot of time climbing on roofs, which was, you know, kind of a hazardous work. You know, to install these rooftop antennas and somehow or other getting the the cable from the antenna into the house. And, to, and I really don't remember how, where that came from. You know, how if it came through a window or what. But all of those folks who did that for a living, this it disappeared. Nobody was doing rooftop antennas anymore. I imagine some of them got jobs with uh, satellite dish places. Because that was oftentimes the same sort of, well, the first ones, definitely not. I mean, they were not rooftop units. The very first satellite dishes were like eight feet in diameter. They were just these gigantic things uh, before they came out with like the, what are they, like a foot and a half in diameter or something now. Um, but I imagine some of the people who did antenna installation could easily move on to um, satellite dish installation once the little ones came out because it involved the same sort of thing climbing up on roofs and running cables but um, for the most part cable installation was very different because it was digging in the dirt you know laying cables in the dirt and then uh, running them into the house through the walls anyway it uh, you know the entire industry, like people talk about it kind of jokingly, the buggy whips, right? The buggy buggy whip manufacturers and actually all the harnesses and everything, all the leather works that went into uh, horse drawn carts and transportation and things, even horse drawn trolleys, the early tracked trolley cars in cities were drawn by horses. And, Anyway, all the people who made all the tack for that and ended up being unemployed when the horses weren't used for that. And then all of the other attendant things, you know, the people who kept the stables, the folks who grew all the stuff that they ate, the people who got rid of the poo. I mean, you just think about the tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of people who entire life just disappeared because of a technological change. This is not a new phenomenon, phenomenon at all. It's just happened over and over as things changed and then the same thing happened because of television with the advent of cable instead of broadcast as people got rid of their TV antennas. And then the entire cityscape changed, you know? So instead of when you looked at a neighborhood from the top from above, seeing s just a forest of, uh, of antennae, the rooftops were clear, except for a few people who got satellite dishes. Talked about that, I mean, you know, there were factories, entire factories set up to manufacture these things. And it wasn't just the people who made them, but it was the people who designed them and sold them and transported them. All that just disappeared in what, a decade. Don't think about these massive dislocations in uh, in employment. When you think of things like that, but I did, and that's what I talked about on Friday. Um, and so, since I have to talk about things while I'm doing this, this is not, you know, if I were doing Submarine Wednesday, if I were doing that today, if you watched last week Wednesday, you saw badly things went. <clears throat> and how it took forever to get practically nowhere 
which was not unusual because that's become a feature of Submarine Wednesday, was spending like three and a half hours of streaming time that is not counting the breaks and getting practically nothing done. Anyway, if this were Submarine Wednesday, I'd be talking about the things that didn't go right and what I needed to do to fix them. That is to say the very top of the sail or the conning tower, which doesn't fit. So sometime between now and next Wednesday, I'll be modifying the parts that didn't fit together so that they do fit so that I don't take up like 45 minutes of the stream um, just trying to manipulate little bits of plastic to get to fit together unless that's something that you really want to see you know that you enjoy hearing me go sighing and moaning about how badly things are going but what I'm hoping to do for next submarine Wednesday assuming uh, that there aren't any more rush orders you know from the D and D DM to get this done even if it means working overtime that doesn't happen again then uh, um Try to get that part of it finished before the stream so that I can get the forward torpedo room finished and get the conning tower done and begin pulling out the pieces for the uh, mess hall and the control room. But don't worry, there are many things that need to be done before I can start pulling out those pieces. Uh, one is, you know, cementing on the parts that I modified so that they fit on the conning tower. The inner hull needs to be put into the outer hull of the forward torpedo room. And then that needs to set a bit uh, because you might think that it's ready to go in, but no, it's not. I need to walk the back of it where the, the holes penetrate the bulkhead. I don't want those holes to show when the thing's put together, so I'm going to fill those in with some plastic putty and then smooth it out and sand it down. And if you recall, the opposite side of the bulkhead, opposite the torpedo room, actually will then become the home for three different levels of deck. And each one is painted a different color. So after the, the plastic putty is sort of settled down, it need to be painted those colors before the whole thing can be inserted into the hall. You know, things will need to, anyway, uh, thinking about that, I might end up doing it in multiple steps because um, the, the cement needs to set some before I can fill in the holes on the opposite side without disturbing it. So I'll probably, one of the first things I'll probably do is put the two pieces of the hull together, the inner and outer hull, and hold them firmly for three or four minutes, as they tell you when you are playing around with that model cement, until it looks like they're being held where they need to be. There really isn't any place to clamp them. Can't even use like rubber bands or anything. Um, yeah, there's really no place to clamp them. I'm gonna give this a stir again. Good morning. Thanks for joining in, Dark. I'm working on sewer tiles for our D&D campaign. At the same time, giving you a preview of next week's Submarine Wednesday, because this Submarine Wednesday was preempted by uh, 
directive from the dungeon master that these sewer tiles needed to be finished now. I'm doing the first of two steps on the walls. Getting uh, just the, the gray <coughs> washed, you know, you know sewery kind of dirtyish way. So it's not going on evenly at all. It's just being mushed in here. Especially trying to get it into the the mortar joints so that those are dark and that the rest is just kind of speckled and messy looking as you know sewers and then I'll be painting a dark stripe of uh, black mold across the median line and then I've got a bunch of sewer troughs and those have another a two Actually, it's a three-step process, but I'll be doing two of the three definitely today. One is a brown wash highlighting the center of the trough, and then after that, a black wash representing the uh, you know the place where the liquid flows most off. Anyway, so I'll be doing that. So I'm doing this gray, this dark gray on the walls first. And then these will be set aside and I'll be doing the brown on the trough. And then uh, the black, the black wash goes on both of them. So I'll go back to these walls and then to the, uh, the troughs. And then the final step, which I may or may not get to today at all, depends on quickly this all goes, but I will be able to finish on Friday, is to put a little rivulet of um, the clear epoxy down the center of the troughs so that it looks like sewer water is flowing through them. I was talking about the uh, social and industrial disruption caused by the movement from broadcast TV to cable and how all the people who spent, you know, spent their lives installing television antennas on people's roofs and all of the people who made it and all the people who did the supplies for it and they made the equipment to make it. When we think about the many, many layers that go into making something, all of those folks who did that for rooftop television antennas, their entire industry just disappeared, gone. You can even get such a thing anymore. I imagine, I imagine there's probably like one place somewhere that could make a rooftop antenna for you. Maybe probably even a rotary one with a motor in it. That moved it around and pointed it in the direction that gave you the best reception for your broadcast channels. But I don't think so. I think they have a totally different kind of antenna now. My brother talked about getting one that uh, basically like a plate, a dinner plate kind of thing. You just attach to the wall. Anyway, yeah. start having you know people think talking about you know job killing changes in technology it's it's happened over and over and over and over there there, there was a whole industry a very sophisticated industry that made picture tubes for the old televisions and they probably adapted when they went to color. You know, the same ones who made black and white ended up making the color tubes, right? That was an evolution. But then you ended up with uh, LED flat, flat panel stuff 
and so the entire picture tube industry except I don't know there might be little remnants of it for some specialty stuff I don't I doubt it there massive industry competitors competition for your picture tube <laughs> hold on back vacuum tubes all the radios all the televisions even the computers the early computers were what run on vacuum tubes before solid state transistors became a thing. Yeah, that's a whole industry that pretty much got wiped out just like that. So this isn't to make, you know, this isn't like a doomsday conversation, it's just saying. As things happen, we should look back at how this has happened in the past and how we didn't really, you know. Your genitorials, you know, or conversations about how we shouldn't allow cable TV because it will be so job killing. I'm not sure if that did happen or not. I'm sure, you know, there was a great deal of disruption and sadness when your um, TV antenna plant shut down in your town and there wasn't anything to replace it. I think it was quite the same as it is now when people look at maybe their, their combust, internal combustion engine plant shutting down because cars are going to batteries or something. Not sure what, what, why the difference. Not taking a position on it one way or the other because this is relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons, not controversy painting with Dyson Dungeons. But, you know, it's happened many, many times in the past. And not just, you know, the technology within, since the, in the 20th century, but many times before that as well. Entire social orders, mm -hmm. the, the craft base things around textiles and so I mean not just killed jobs so to speak or eliminated jobs but changed the entire structure of the society in which people lived I think it might be instructive you know look back at that kind of stuff as uh, some historical lessons for how, why that happened, how it happened, whether what we call progress was hindered or held back because of it, or whether it was seen as a good thing or a bad thing. Many lessons from history. What did I, I just read a quote about history? I can't remember where it was or who said it, but it was something to maybe get it slightly wrong. History repeats itself, and that's what's wrong with history. Anyway, what I was really doing was. Uh, recapping because I have to fill the show with some sort of monologue here. No, I'm not skilled. I'm just being really fast. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't looking up. Um, this, this, requires, this requires a level of skill that I possess, which is to say I'm just mushing wash into the uh, mortar joints here and intentionally making it look uh, uneven because these are sewer tiles and they looked need to look filthy that's that's the theme du jour is I am giving these sewer tiles their filth today 
but I better be fast because I've got a lot of these to do and they need to be done pretty much finished today. Be bound to the stool that I'm on until I'm done. Yeah. So. If you've watched the stream at all in the past, you will know that frequently I am a lesson in what not to do when you're painting. Those things don't always go right. Last week, Wednesday, when I was working on the submarine. Although, that wasn't so much a thing about painting not going right. That, that wasn't the problem. It was more about uh, the assembly of parts that didn't fit. So the 1960s era Renoir uh, visible submarine. Let, let's just say that the 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 manufacturing process did not produce precision parts. They required a good deal of cleaning up with mold marks and stuff that needed to be cleaned off. And then even to fit, almost nothing fit. And so, yeah. And I, and I pre-fit, pre-fit. I tested all of the, the fits of all the parts on the conning tower, the sail. I tested all of them, but I tested them individually, not in combination. And I put them all together. The very, very last one, the very top of the submarine, the top of the sail, uh, didn't fit. And I have no idea why not. I mean, it's the one part that should have. Yeah, we have done, like, definitely many, many hundreds of, of dungeon tiles. which we use in our Dungeons and Dragons campaign, which streams uh, with a live chat on Sundays, three Sundays a week, a month, three Sundays a month, not a week. Duh. That would be quite a week, wouldn't it? Um, three Sundays a month at two. And you can also catch previous episodes on YouTube or as a podcast, which is kind of cool. So if you if you join us and you're not sure what's going on, you can catch some of the old ones and figure out who the characters are and where they are and kind of what's going on. joining in and watching this today or catching it later on YouTube uh, you'll note that Submarine Wednesday has been I hope just temporarily replaced with get the sewer tiles done day the Submarine Wednesday was just sort of an experiment in tolerance. It was, I built this model when it was original back in like the mid 60s, early to mid 60s, and then wanted to somehow replicate that adolescent experience. So I got myself three of them. Th each of which was uh, completed to a greater or lesser degree and no one could guarantee all the parts were there so I bought three of them just so I could make sure that in total I would have enough usable parts to make at least one submarine and I have to tell you that it was when I was young the paints were bad my skills you know the Cement was bad. All the 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 
things needed to make this submarine work. A very not usable, not as user friendly as they are now. Ooh, okay. Um. But it's much more difficult now because I'm paying so much more attention to the detail of the submarine and the different colors and whether or not the parts fit together, you know. When you're like 11 years old and the parts don't fit, you just put more cement on them. As long as they stick together, then that's it. Anyway, I I think I probably finished that whole thing in maybe a week or so. I don't remember how long it took. It's quite a complicated. It is quite a complicated model, but it's uh, challenging now. So anyway, uh, if you find this to be relaxing, please join in on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 until 2. This Monday I wasn't here, and no one else was able or willing to take up the relaxing paintings, so yeah, this was, this was one of those weeks where it's only Wednesday and Friday from 10 until 2. Then I could do uh, decimals and fractions. Kind of a recurring theme when I'm doing dungeon tiles. Here. Preparation for today's session, I was told that instead of talking about 60s cartoons and 60s TV and things like that, I need to talk about 1960s breakfast cereal. I don't know how long that's going to go. But there's a lot of the cereals were the same, it's just the commercials were different. We looked and a lot of those things are still being made, like Maypo. M A Y P O. Catchphrase was this little kid who appeared to be, I don't know, like maybe four or five or something. Looked like a preschooler. So this little kid comes in in a, their cowboy outfit, big cowboy hat, of course, you know, a gun belt and a gun because in the 50s and 60s, everybody was a cowboy. Or an Indian, we had played cowboys and Indians. That was, you know, we didn't we didn't have the same kind of uh, sensitivity going on there that maybe we do now. And the Indians were kind of a prop for the most part for the cowboys. Anyway, um, yeah. Most of most of TV appeared to be a western of one sort or another, at least that's what I recall. And so all the kids had their cowboy outfit complete with the, a hat and a holster and a fake gun, Usually, sometimes a, a cap gun that, if you got caps, would make a banging sound and smell bad. Yeah, so this little kid comes to the table in his cowboy outfit, and the dad, you know, this was a 1960s dad, so had to be stern. The dad was very stern. So says, give me your hat. No, I want my hat. Probably the better part of 25% of uh, this commercial, maybe a lot more of it, was arguing about the possession of the hat. 
but eventually, and the kid didn't want to eat the maple because he wanted his hat, and the dad didn't want him to wear his hat at the table because for some reason that's not a thing you do, and you got to follow the hat rule, whatever that might be. So they argued about the hat, and then the airplane and hangar trick. didn't work but eventually the kid tried the maple and then the dad started eating the maple and the kid said I want my maple instead of saying I want my hat and that was the whole commercial um, back then commercials were all a minute long they weren't limited to uh, 30 or even 15 seconds like a lot of them are now so you know, they had to fill the time I guess with things like arguing about cowboy hats. We discovered that they apparently still make maple. That was the era when it started out with real basic cereals. You, know, you get cream of wheat and your oatmeal and your uh, cornflakes and the puffed cereals. You get rice and puffed wheat, that kind of thing. Brightly colored and sugared cereals started to come. Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, you know, just it just didn't resonate as much as uh, Frosted Flakes, Tony the Tiger, and all that kind of thing, and Sugar Pops, and then Lucky Charms, which came out later anyway. Yeah. So talking about cereal commercials just isn't going to fill the time today. Sorry. Thank you for doing that. Well, relaxing painting is uh, me muttering in a low-toned voice about things that are more or less historically accurate. Um, it, gives, it gives me a chance to try to keep my memory working. But we do have a lot of fun playing together in our D&D &D campaign. So you're, you're, it's really appreciated. <laughs> Any new 60s cartoons? No. I haven't gone back I know everything everything can be recaptured on the internet now. What I really want to watch is is if I can find it is uh Supercar because I've talked about Supercar in the past and no one really believes me. Well, no one believed me you didn't even believe me about Super Chicken until you went on the internet and saw that it was real. And I got a gift, which is now, I think, behind me somewhere, of a super chicken action figure, which didn't exist back then. Figures came later, uh, but yeah. I could call on Super Chicken and Mighty Manfred and the Flintstones and the Jetsons and Yogi Bear. I did talk about Yogi Bear and how, thinking back at it, I can't remember any one episode that wasn't exactly the same as any other episode. I mean, how many different variations on the a bear trying to outwit the ranger to get picnic baskets can there be? I don't know. They seemed, as I recall, Yogi Bear had many, many episodes um, 
probably be worth watching them to see how it was even possible to have any kind of variation from one to the next. Maybe they weren't. Maybe they just counted on their audience having short attention spans and no memory. And so you could just show the same Yogi Bear episode basically wherever. Yep. What were the big deals in 60 cartoons, or at least, you know, kind of 60-ish? I think, I think uh, Betty and Wilma having kids was a big deal. You know, we didn't find out how kids happened, but they did. So Betty and Wilma, had both, they both had to have kids in order to have the symmetry of the of the show maintained. And of course the kids had to like fall for each other. The kid interaction stuff going on. So who? You, you do internet stuff all the time. Look up Supercar. See if you can find that. So it was not a cartoon. It was a marionette show. Mary, you know, the stringed puppets, not the hand puppet where there's a hand inside the puppet, but the kind that went up around strings. Yeah, it was one of those. Made it quite different from everything else. Not, not super cow. <laughs> yeah, there might have been a super cow, I don't know. But it might not have even, you know, it might have been like a European production in, in French or something. Yeah, I, would, I thought super car was really good because the car, it, it could, it was a flying car. Right? And those actually did exist. A car that rode on the road and could fly. But it was also um, a boat, which also existed, right? Cars that uh, became boats. But the thing that really made it super was that it was also a submarine. And. and that it could do all of those things. It's warm and too well. Uh, a car, a plane, a boat, and a submersible. That was definitely super. The only thing about it one thing about it, you know, being marionettes, is that you could you could see the strings because it was just marionettes, which diminished a little bit from the effect when they were a submarine, because you know they were underwater, but the top of the car had to be open for in order for the strings to go through it. So we had to imagine that the bubble fruit of the supercar um, was actually enclosed when we could see that it was open for the strings. But otherwise it was it was pretty good. Are all of the supercars on YouTube really there? They are. They're in the public domain now, and they're all on there. How many episodes of Supercar were there? This is pretty cool. 
I'm talking to who here, you know, about like internet searches. This is, it's kind of like having what chat GPT or GI or something where you just, where you talk and uh, then you, you get uh, information off of the internet like that. So I don't know why you needed artificial intelligence when you could have who instead. like a real old codger I could say hey you kid look at this up look this up for me won't you what did I look it up for you well, because I couldn't I can't work things ever since they took the knobs off the TVs Never figure it out after that. They had knobs on TVs? Yeah, lots of them. And, uh, there were two knobs. Two knobs for changing the channels. You go, why would you need two? Well, you needed one to, to change channels for the VHF, channels 1 through 13. And you needed a whole nother knob to change channels for the UHF, the ultra high frequency, channels 14 and above. So your fancy TVs, after UHF came on, you had to have, like get a whole new TV. That was a, I don't know. I guess it was kind of a good thing when the number of channels expanded into UHF. I remember the UHF reception was really kind of bad at first because the, the equipment really wasn't uh, made for it yet. So we had two knobs for changing the channels. You had a knob to adjust the um, the volume, of course. You know. Hey, make it louder! I can't hear it with the mixer going on in the kitchen. Okay. Or this part's really funny. I want to, I want to hear it. How do you know it's funny? You've seen this before? That we didn't have reruns then. I mean, we had reruns in the sense that they were programs were taped and then and then uh, replayed like during the summer when you weren't on season. But there wasn't a, any instant replay. You couldn't just like record something and then play it back. Home video recorders that were not a thing. Instant replays weren't a thing in sports anyway. Um, yeah, so there were two knobs to change the channels. There was one for the volume. There was almost always one for the brightness. So you could adjust how bright the picture was. And you had, you could actually do that pretty easily. By just turning a knob because you know sometimes there'd be sun coming through the window and then at night you didn't want it quite as bright there was a knob for the vertical hold which we actually ended up using fairly often because these pictures would flip okay well here yeah there's more these, I'm going to pull out these. These are the corner tiles. And just like magic. Yep. When I'm done with these and put them over on the side here, I'll be done putting the gray wash on the blocks of the wall tiles, at least the ones that I find. And I'll be moving that and then bringing over the tray of the sewer trough tiles so that I can put the... Whoa, that got really dark for some reason. The sewer trough tiles so that I can um, 
paint the brown down the center of them. But I can tell you that the ones that you see here now are the ones that are. I have to say though that from this perspective, being on this side of the tiles, and pulling more out didn't feel like really very magical. It's just like, oh, how many of these are there? How long will this go on? Oh yeah, so vertical hold, the vertical hold. Some the earlier TVs put the vertical hold in the in the back where it was a little hard to reach, but it became such a thing that you needed to do all the time that the more convenient TVs, the more user friendly televisions, actually just said, Well, yeah, you're gonna be the picture's gonna be flipping for you. So we're gonna put the vertical hold right out front so that you can get to it. It's an adjustment that often needed to be made and occasionally, like during a show you really wanted to watch or worse yet, a sporting event, especially a football game, um, you just, you couldn't get the vertical to hold at all. Just, it was very frustrating. So all you saw was this picture of something that just kept flipping. Hi, Flying Ryan. Thanks for joining in. And anybody who joined in with you with the raid, oh, eight viewers, thank you so much. Appreciate it. What I'm working on now. Um, Sub Submarine Wednesday got uh, preempted by we need to get these sewer tiles done because apparently in our Dungeons and Dragons campaign the uh, party is going to be consigned to the sewers. Party hasn't been in the sewers in a long time. And I'm not sure if I can say we're looking forward to it. I mean, it's like old home week kind of. Oh yeah, we're back in the sewers. I wonder what kind of horrible slime monster or murder cult or whatever it is that we're going to find down here. Sometimes delightful creatures, you know. You can find in the sewers, but uh, yeah. I know. I can explain what happened. The uh, I, I was away on Monday, so got behind, and now I absolutely need to get these done, I am told, like almost immediately. So, Submarine Wednesday has been delayed until next week. It will be an exciting time because I'm going to try to get some of the work done on the submarine between streams so that I can move along with the search in the box of parts, the box of little parts for all the pieces for the uh, mess hall, the mess hall and the galley, which will be pretty cool because those parts really really tiny this is like itsy bitsy things like three sixteenths of an inch wide chairs and miniature tables and things so that'll be kind of fun so next week on submarine wednesday i'll be finishing the tor forward torpedo room except for the very front bulkhead which needs detail painting that I need to go to, but that everything else can be put on and that can be put on later. Um, the conning tower or the sail, which was the part that didn't fit last week, that needs to be heavily modified. And then I'll be starting to work on the next two chunks, which are the mess hall and the control room. And those two will be really challenging It'd be challenging just to find the parts because they're really tiny. Thanks for joining in, Flying Ragan, and thanks for bringing in, um, thanks for bringing in the raid. 
really appreciate that. You who are Raiders, thank you for joining. And if you haven't already, feel free, because it is free to be a follower, but you're also welcome to become a subscriber on YouTube. And if you really, really like this kind of thing, um, go to patreon.com slash dice and dungeons and become a patron. Okay, well, this is moving along okay. It's only been an hour in. I might... I really would like to have these pretty much finished today. I'm not sure I'll be able to get it all done because there's a lot of them. And each one of these tiles, it's taken an hour to get this far, well, needs another another feature, the black mold feature on the water line. That, that dark line there. Yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it? <clears throat> I don't know. I hope this doesn't put off people who are watching or joining in that there's actually painting going on, on relaxing painting. Because I can promise that on uh, Submarine Wednesday this coming week, next week, that there will be... No, I mean, other than touch-ups, there aren't too many. Other than touch-ups, there might be no painting at all. Depending on how far I get on the bulkhead, the aft bulkhead of the torpedo room. The uh, painting that needs to be done is there's two parts one is the detail on the forward bulkhead of the torpedo room where the torpedo hatches and the clocks and the dials and everything are and that requires some painting yet and the aft bulkhead of the uh, torpedo room well thinking about it there are a few other spots um the the very bottom of the conning tower sail had some pieces that were glued into it and those show through on the bottom the one thing i want to do is fill those that opening where they were glued cemented in i want to fill that in with plastic putty sand it down I knew I would get the tops of one of these. I need to sand it down and then paint it, repaint it, so that that doesn't show. I'm trying to, you know, get it, get the detail as well done as I can on the submarine. So there'll be basically what you're going to see is um, hopefully successful attempts at assembling parts. The application of plastic putty filler to fill in some of the openings where the parts did cement together and then some, a little bit of touch-up painting. Most of it is going to end up being finding and then trimming because these parts always have a lot of trimming to do for pieces of the mess hall and galley and the the parts are really tiny and some of them are actually kind of amusing the painting of those parts is going to be a challenge so that'll be fun to watch me curse as much as I don't as as I attempt to um, get the white paint on the stove and refrigerator and cabinets and things in the galley to be even and then try to do the detail of the cabinet handles and the knobs on the stove and that sort of thing. The assembly of those, which will come probably f a long time in the future because the painting will take so long, um, will be kind of interesting because the parts are just so small. They're like 
you need to hold this with a tweezers level of parts. Thank you for the follow. It's much appreciated. watching Bob Ross. It's almost like four hours of, of this. Yeah, the thing that's different about the, the monologue with uh, Submarine Wednesdays and this is that this, this doesn't require me to pay much attention as I'm just splishing wash intentionally unevenly on dungeon sewer tiles. Um, most of the monologue on, on Submarine Wednesdays is describing what I'm doing and why, and then as I'm doing it, complaining about how it's not working and maybe why not and what I might need to do instead. So it's things like, I don't know what color to make this. This paint isn't covering very evenly. I might hate to put two coats on. I have no clue how to get this detail. That's the kind of thing that happens on Submarine Wednesday. On many fig days, I often have to talk about what I'm doing as well, but on days like this, I have to fill the time in between people chatting. You know, if there's live chat going on, and I'm, I'm a little bit um, at a disadvantage there because if I'm painting detail, I have to take my glasses off because they don't work close up very well. When I'm painting this, it can hold it away from me a little bit or comfortably with my trifocals. But when I'm painting detail, like on the submarine or on minifigs, I have to take them off and sometimes use my my head magnifiers uh, I, even even though I have a specially crafted um, large print chat screen I don't always look up to look to check on it that's just kind of my excuse for why sometimes I'm not paying attention to chat Okay, well, I have done that, and now uh, the next step, I'm going to have to get up and move some things around, so I'll be off camera for a bit, but I'll keep talking. Uh, the next bit is these, the trough tiles, and there are... Six, there's three dozen of these things, there's 36 of them. And I'm attempting to make them look like this. So the first step in this three-stage process is to get um, umber wash, which is the uh, color that I we used originally on these to go here. You know, between right along here and the edges will be a little ragged, but I'll be going through like that 36 times. And then after after that's done, I'll set these aside for those to dry, and then I'll bring back the walls and paint the high watermark with black. And then I'll come back to these and... Thank you, Happy Fins. <laughs> and thanks for, for becoming um, a follower. Uh, yeah, so I'll come back to these after I'm done with those using the same black wash painting down the center like this again kind of unevenly and Then I don't know how long that's going to take to dry uh, but this rivulet of sewerage Thanks for following. I really appreciate that. Thanks um, This rivulet is I did this in epoxy and I probably will do it again I just find it easy to mix some epoxy up and spread it um, we have this thing called realistic water, but it, that is not as viscous, and so it tends to spread a little bit. This I can just get a toothpick out and just blush it out. 
And I'll do that 36 times down the center of these. Anyway, this one eventually should look more or less like this. But the next step is to, oh, excuse me, get up, move this tray without spilling it off of the bench next to me. It's so far. Now is this it's endless? Thirty six of these. I'm really glad that this process, though, is uh, requires not very much thinking and not very much painting skill. Yeah. Once you get going, there are lots of them to remember. I mean, just trying to do the just all the westerns, and they all had theme songs back then. You know, now, now sometimes shows will have some music that they play. And there were some like Friends that actually had theme songs, but all the shows had theme songs then. It was Wyatt Earp, Daniel Boone, Gunsmoke. The Rifleman, the Rebel, Johnny Yuma. Johnny Yuma was a rebel. He roamed through the West. I think half the people who fought at the Alamo had TV shows. None of them had anything to do with the reality of it of the West, but that's what we had then, Westerns. Okay, I haven't done this. We'll see how this works. So this brown. Brown seems really thin. It's not it's not browning up very much. Put it on I'm gonna put it on very heavy like this. I think that's how it has to be done. Yeah, I mean, just really, really gloop it on there in order for it to uh, give us a browning effect. The 36. We don't need to be putting it that much in the middle because that's going to be black, but waste of wash doing that actually. But I think that works if I just put a lot of it on like that. And I think when we did these, I did, we did brown all the way across because you're never really sure where the black was going to cover. And I'm not sure. It looks like what happened, though, is that the green, we didn't put the green down in the middle where the brown went eventually. So it wasn't brown over green. It was just brown over primer. So I'm hoping this looks okay. The important part is going to be the black down the middle anyway. So 236 doesn't sound like we made much progress. That that's one one eighteenth. Reduce the fraction. Three thirty six. Ooh, you know. When you think about it, 336 doesn't sound like you made much progress, and you haven't. 
But when you say one twelfth, it makes it sound like you almost got somewhere. Hmm. Okay. We have a, you know, extra bottles of this wash, so I can put it on pretty heavily without worrying too much about having enough of it. But I especially want to get it up on these areas that are going to be above the black. Ordinarily with a wash, one would not want all these bubbles to be bubbling. But I think in this case, it's a sewer. It hasn't been on the road. I, I think you're right. I actually don't recall a supercar being a car very often. But you did get to see it go up in the air and under the ocean. I think, though, that if you look at it, it has a car-like shape. Did the supercar, did supercar have a theme song? All the rest of them did. Super Chicken did. Tom Terrific did. Yeah, even as the Westerns got more modern, I mean, you started getting things like Maverick. And so it's kind of, it wasn't quite the same. And some of them evolved in really interesting ways. Uh, Gunsmoke at one point, you know, which was one of the very, very first ones. It was around for a long, long time actually got it got started to become kind of film noir -y. and it's you know in its music and mood it was really kind of interesting Six one sixth of the this is moving along okay should I should be able to get all this brown on. 36 sewer tile troughs before break. I'm just dabbing it on. I'm intentionally making lots of bubbles here because I think that will look sewery as they dry. They'll look a little bit globby. This one has, this is bubbly. Let's see how that looks. If the bubbles even stay bubbles, I think that would be okay. Yeah, it's some dimensionality. <laughs> I think you're right. I, as I recall now, it was like people going, supercar, supercar. Quite a few of those theme songs were just repetitive. I remember, yeah, you know, when we got together, we were talking about some of the uh, old TV shows, like 77 Sunset Strip, and everybody's going, nah, no, that didn't really exist. And then who looked it up, and there, of course, was 77 Sunset Strip. And their theme song was, it just felt like an endless repetition of Somebody singing 77 Sunset Strip with uh, finger snapping in the background. Um, yeah, some of those theme songs were just not very clever. They weren't really good ones. Like <clears throat> Bean Acres or Beverly Hillbillies or some of those shows. Those, those were catchy theme songs. Everybody had to know all the words to the Beverly Hillbillies or um, Gilligan's Island.
Of course, some, some theme songs didn't have very good lyrics. Like, uh, I have to say, like Star Trek, right? The original series, where the lyrics were basically do 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 right? Not do not very, I mean, they're kind of, it was a catchy tune. The music was quite good, but the, the lyrics were very good. It's more of a spoken word thing, wasn't it? Ongoing mission. Um, anyway, yeah. We are a painting stream. Yeah, there's too many syllables in that. Just find a different way to say that. Anyway, yeah, we could, you know, what, how did it start? Sit right back and hear a tale, tale of a fateful ship, trip, something like that. So yeah, we grow up remembering the words to all these theme songs, the Beverly Hillbillies, Green Acres, um, Mr. Ed. Because a horse is a horse, of course, of course. And no one can talk to a horse, of course. That is, of course, unless the horse. Pretty impressive, right? It was a famous Mr. Ed. So you can go right to the source and ask the horse. He'll give you the answer that you'll endorse. Because you're always honest. Isn't this, this is, I should stop, right? So I did, because that, that was just going on. It was going on in a probably not healthy way. So is the Gilligan's Island theme in the public domain now, or is it still copyrighted, you know? And we need seven. Well, we do have sevens, but that's not the same as seven characters. Um, the three of us plus Holwyn is four. Artemore, five. Sevens, tens. If we give give them um, count them the six we need we need one more we can't just do a guest star if we're doing a Gilligan's Island thing they have to be they have to be there all the time if nines would get a pet of some sort then we could have seven. A, you know, a very obvious uh, homage to Gilligan's Island. That's what it would be. Actually, our you know our D and D sessions sometimes are a lot like Gilligan's Island, and uh, you know, there's a good deal of humor. But there's also a fair amount of problem solving. And we've been able to solve almost all the problems we've run into. Sometimes, sometimes we have to solve the problems that we create for ourselves. Which did happen on Gilligan's Island. It's kind of a thing. Where problems happen because of something Gilligan did. They weren't martinis, it was super sauce. But yeah, you could. You could get a you could do that. <laughs> My guess is that um probably nobody would recognize what it was 
that you were imitating. Unless they were watching this stream, unless they were watching relaxing paintings with Dyson Dungeons, then they would immediately recognize who it was that you were watching. Um, 16 of them. 16 is what? 8 teens. We're nice. It's almost half. Almost halfway done. This is 17. The next one is 1836, which will be 50%, which is half, which is like as close to being finished as having s close to being started. Hmm. Sort of a feeling of accomplishment. I think these are turning out okay. I mean, the brown is okay, and when I put the black down the center, it'll look okay. I don't think they look as good as the ones that Nikki did. But, um, I don't know. It'll look quite a bit different with the really dark, the dark bit down the middle. Just like the other wall tiles will. They'll look a lot different when that's put in, the really dark, striped, smushy, slimy, black mold kind of thing. secret to this is just putting it on way heavier than usual. We just sort of, like I did the very first time, is just sort of spreading it across. But the brown needs to be put on there pretty heavily or else it doesn't show brown. Maybe that should be um, one of our Patreon only warm ups is uh, coming up with a theme song. I mean, we know that the, during the warm ups, we are the party. We're playing the same characters, more or less. I mean, with some variation in ability and so on, but. Uh, I don't think it would be inappropriate. I know we're not supposed to have like a carryover between the the warm the warm ups and the actual. In the actual stream, but if we came up with a theme song we might be able to get away with that. I might, I might put that up on Discord. Remember nines, that's my idea. Nines is the... Oh, that could be interesting, yeah. 
Nines is a bard who will be a know-it-all. I'm the musical one here. The theme song should be what I say it is, because I am the one that is musical. Okay. No. Mm, where to go? Yeah, it should work out okay. I should be done with this component of the work. That is to say, the brown wash, um, the trough tiles, right around break time, give or take uh, a couple of minutes. Not the wash is that if it isn't dark enough, I can always go back and put on more. So, um, yeah, I think that's an idea. We we, we we don't have that. We don't have a theme song. We have some really nice music by Nakarada, who's, who's also the composer of the music that you get on Relaxing Painting, which is supposed to loop and continuously play but for some reason the last couple of uh, streams hadn't been I don't know if it is now or not because I can't hear the music down here it's just added to the stream um Yeah, sorry, I was just trying to think about theme songs. kid watching supercar I thought it'd be really cool to try to make a supercar right so I, I mean like third grade level engineering drawings of what the supercar would be like I don't know why I was bothering doing that because there was already a marionette supercar and that was as real as one is ever going to get but you know whatever So this will work out pretty well. Um, we'll get the brown on, take a break. All of this will have dried uh, enough anyway. This is supposed to be all slimy and sewery, so if the colors run together a little bit, that is to say the black and the brown, that's not going to be a much of an issue. That's the nice thing about doing sewers. Um, and then I'll be getting out a whole bunch of black wash, which we'll be using on these as well as the multitude of wall tiles that I did earlier. I'll be painting ragged black stripes with the wash on both the walls horizontally. There, like that, and down the center of the troughs. And I might actually, what I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm going to do the troughs first, even though I'm doing these later, they'll, they'll dry sufficiently during the break, because if the black dries enough, while I'm doing the, um, the walls, I might be able to do the epoxy rivulets today. I doubt that I'll be able to get them done during the normal streaming time. You know, I probably won't finish that by 2 o'clock. Because it's kind of a pain in the butt. Slow process, dribbling, 
epoxy down the middle with a toothpick or a little brush or something. Um, but this is, it'll be like Friday. I'll be doing some uncompensated overtime work. In order to get these done, and then I'll have Friday. Ooh, okay. Well, that's an interesting thought. If I finish these today, and I get the approval from the DM that they are, in fact, completed. What do you think? Um, thank you. Yeah, they are coming along. Okay. What do you think? If I finish these today by doing uncompensated overtime, you know, by running running the stream like an hour or so longer like I did last week, Friday, when I was putting the green on, um, can I do submarine Friday? It's either that or going back to the that armored minifig I was working on. And here's an opportunity for anybody in chat anybody at all in chat is if I I can save the epoxy until Friday DM I know the DM would much prefer that this was completed today so that the epoxy had a chance to fully set up I'm going to be using 30 minute epoxy I had in the past used f for almost everything been using five minute because you know you have to hold the parts together somehow and you don't want to sit there for more than a half hour uh, holding parts together while the epoxy set but for this little rivulet it's a good thing because then i can mix up quite a lot of it at once and it won't set up um, before I do like four or five of them, which would happen. So today is it started out pretty nice. There's some sunshine and things, but it's supposed to start raining and be really yucky the next few days. Um, but here, this is a, this is a question for those of you who are watching relaxing painting. You can influence the future of this of this show yet this week by saying on Friday, assuming I do the overtime today, which looks like more and more uh, real likelihood in order to get these done. Um, you want to see me working on a really boring little mini fig or should we have submarine Friday? Your votes will count. And if we have Submarine Friday, then tomorrow off stream, I will do what I can to modify the sail of the, the, the top of the conning tower or sail so that it fits, so that I can cement it on during the stream and get on with it. Because I know that's going to take a while. It, uh, it involves removing plastic from a place that's very difficult to reach if I take it off the top of the sail or it involves um, filing down three little tubes that are more or less perilously <clears throat> cemented into things that are more or less perilously cemented into the hull. Either way, it's going to be very slow and very boring to watch. And it will be the kind of thing where the only thing I'm going to be talking about is how slow and boring and difficult it is. So we don't really want to stream that. Anyway, um, yeah. Thank you. Yep. So it's your choice. I can work on the armored minifig 
or I can do a submarine Friday this week. And as far as what I'm doing now goes, I've got four more of these. So it's going to go rather quickly. So the break today is going to be a little early because I want to take a break and let these dry. Because the next step is to put the dark stripe down the center. And I want these to be a little bit dry before I do that. I don't want the colors to just mush into each other necessarily and so yeah I'm gonna take that break and then when I come back I'll get the black wash out and I'm going to do the sewer troughs first so that I can let those dry while I do the walls when they're dry I can mix up the 30 minute epoxy which I will get out and set up during break they're um, they're new so the little the little tips haven't been opened up yet so I can do that during break and then get that done Submarine Friday, yes or no? That is the question. Yeah, this is a good time for a break anyway, because sometimes after caffeinating, one just needs to have a little bit of a break. And if none of you in chat want to express an opinion, I know. I mean, to have to have power over a show. Well, what you need to say is the question is: Submarine Friday, yes or no? So if you say yes, then you're going to get you're going to vote for having the submarine on Friday. And if you vote no then um, it'll be something else. I have a preference, but I want I want to leave it to the will of the viewers. This is like uh, the test in participatory democracy here, right here, right here live on relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. Oh, no, it's not relaxing when you're forced to make a decision. Uh, to say, on one hand, I'd like your feedback. On the other hand, I don't want to, uh, like, detract from the relaxing part of it. This is a stressful thing. Um, yeah, this one doesn't have a place on the tray. Nice. Okay, there. It's not, if I put it on top of them, it's just touching green. Okay, so this is a, this is one that's dried. And it's not, it's not too bad. You know, it's showing that the, uh, the black will cover almost all of the center. And it's going to be quite erratic, but it'll be very, fairly dark. So I think it'll look okay. Okay, um, now since I have this out, 
I'm going to do some detailing. I just found these sitting here. You might recall these as the sewer pipes, okay? And they, I just squeezed out way too much, but so what? Um, they need to be rusty. You talked about Bob Ross. That's kind of how Bob Ross would do things, right? <laughs> And then it ends up looking good. I don't know. I don't know how that ever happened. I watched this show a couple of times and it's like this. That just can't be done. And then it looked like something. Anyway, this is splotchy rust on the sewer pipe. And since it's splotchy, I'm just splotching it and it'll probably look okay. Not because of skill, but because of uh, luck. I only need to, I don't have to worry about that one, the other side of it, really, because that's on the back wall. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, now it's all brown blotchy kind of looking. We'll see what it looks like when it dries. Side of it. I like these things where... Okay, we have one vote in favor of Submarine Friday. So far, it's unanimous. I love these holders. These holders have magnets in the bottom, these things, so that, um, I don't know, you can stick it on a metal plate or something so it doesn't move around, but what happens is the magic of magnets, right? <laughs> yeah. So not too long ago, I had mini figs sitting on top of here, and I had set one down, and I put the next this other one next to it and it it went flying it jumped like about six inches the mini fig broke i had to glue it all back together yeah i mean fun with magnets how do they work anyway uh here it is now time for me to clean this brush more or less oh that came out really quite decent. Some, sometimes these, the washes of the paints don't come out in the water. Um, and I'm going to take a break. And during the break, during the break, these over here, all around so we won't be able to line it up. All of those with the like, like the brown stripe now in them. Um, those are going to dry, and when I come back, I'm going to be painting a black stripe. Ugh. I shouldn't do that. It's, the camera was actually set up pretty well. Oh well, I'll get to you. I'll get to uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll get to get a headache watching the camera move around. There, that's more or less sort of where it was. Uh, it was just a little bit crooked, but you know, whatever. So yeah, these are going to dry. And when I get back, I'm going to be painting the black stripe down the middle with black wash, which is actually fairly opaque. And I think that'll look good. And then those will be set aside to dry while I do the walls with the stripe across, the black mold, waterline stripe. Okay. And then... Uh, the last thing I'll be doing today, which will probably be an overtime once again, is to mix up some epoxy and start putting the rivulet on 36 of these tiles. 
and I'm looking at the, the one we had done, the prototype. I think there were 10 of them. So that is 3.6 times as many as I had done in the past. Yep. So during break, uh, those will be drying. I'll be getting out the black wash, getting it mixed up nicely and uh, getting the epoxy ready for uh, the last stitch. So thanks for watching so far. Things have been moving along, I guess, pretty quickly. There's just a lot of these things, so it does take some time. Um, we'll be continuing to work on putting the filth onto the sewer tiles. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna paint something on stream. Okay, that should be, that should be interesting. But I think that would be good that you can do that. You can take over one of these Mondays or Fridays to do that. Okay, I think, I think everybody who watches the stream will be really looking forward to you talk about, um, what '90s television, probably. You know, what it was like at that time, as opposed to 60s, which is just way more interesting because television was so, I don't know, interesting back in the 60s. It was all sort of new in many ways. Uh, yeah, it is time for a break, so I better get that going so I can get these other things set up. I will be back uh, before 1230. I can't take too long a break because there's too much work to do. And, I don't want to keep going until sunset today. Um, see you in a little bit with more relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. Back from break um, before 1230. Yay. <laughs> what I didn't do during break was switch. No, I'm not switching trays. I'm doing these first. Um, so just to remind everybody what I'm working on first. What I'm working on first are the sewer troughs and I'm going to be painting the dark line uh, with black wash down the middle and hopefully they will look a little less clean. And then I'll be setting these aside, doing the horizontal black mold stripe on the walls, and then coming back to these and putting in the rivulet of grossness. Okay, so for this, I need the black wash, which is a little darker and denser than the gray. And I should put a glove on, at least on my left hand. Maybe on, maybe on both. Since I've got them. And let's see how long all of this takes. I'm guessing based on how long it took to get the gray in the brown on that and this will take us pretty close to finishing time that is to say both the both the troughs and the walls in that the uh the epoxy rivulet is going to be in overtime today but it'll be really good to get that done Okay, so um, this is the black wash, which looks a lot like the gray wash, except it's a little bit, a little more pigment in it. Um, oh, okay. We thought it was clean, but obviously it wasn't. 
And I want this to go on pretty heavy. Like, yeah, I'm looking at it to see how far up I want it to go. Yeah, I think that that kind of level will let that one dry and see how it looks, but I'm, that's kind of what I'm going for here is... It's pretty dense. Usually, this is put on um, most of the blocks. Not not this dense because it's pretty dark. But in this case, um, you know. We want it pretty dark because it's sewery. I'm putting those up aside because I'm trying to get some sense of uniformity. Yeah, I guess this will work. I'll be um, putting them back on the tray because I'm going to have to move them out of the way later. This looks pretty shiny now, but as it dries, it gets a little less... Uh, it, it calms down. Okay. It get, the gloss goes away, and it gets a little bit lighter as well. At least it has in the past. We'll see what happens this time. Tip over. I somehow think these aren't going to look as good as the ones that Nikki did. But, as long as they look good on camera... Because if what I suspect is true, that our party is about to enter the sewers, those of you who watch the Dungeons & Dragons stream will be seeing these again. as part of the stream as our party will no doubt get lost because we always do in a sewer this is this is going quite quickly which is good Well, the dog stopped barking. I don't know if you noticed, but it can't. I don't know if the filter catches that or not. But just before the break, um, the dogs decided to bark a lot because there was, I guess, the delivery that came to the house. And one of them in particular is a good watchdog. Wants to guard us against uh, when groceries delivered. I don't know if she's ever barked at the dog food delivery. I haven't noticed if there's a 
any kind of discrimination between one delivery or the other. But anyway, yeah, I don't know if you heard it or not, but there was a good deal of barking going on uh, just before the break. But everything's safe. We have been successfully watched by our dog. And then the other one joins in because, you know, you don't want to be left out of the party if there's a bark party going on. See, they're going to come along okay. They're just not, just not as good as the ones that Nikki did. I'm not sure what the difference is. Somehow the brown, I think it's because the brown is over the green this time instead of well, the green just being over the edges. We did it. The technique is a little different. But I, I think the effect is there. And it should look good on, on camera. Because oftentimes when things are, you know, I mean, if you watch something, the movie sets and props are never what they appear to be on camera. You see the real thing and they're kind of scuzzy looking and cardboardy and whatever. The, the magic of... Uh, of media. I don't know what to say, you know. I used up a uh, supercar. Can't go back to Yogi Bear, that's boring. They're missing 11 of the 39. There were 39 supercar episodes. So supercar is kind of like a lot of these other shows. If you wonder how in the world you could have more than maybe three of them without just doing the same thing again. So there's a missing 11. That becomes a mystery. A mystery to be solved. Or maybe best left unsolved. But I do remember that, you know, most of the time supercar would go, would frequently go underwater. That was a thing. It almost always flew somewhere because, you know, it's a flying car. to babble on about here. Put relaxing black wash on these sewer trough tiles. Okay, well, I'm just watching some of these dry and it's not too bad. I'll show you one. This one's this one's drying pretty nicely. So you can see that the yeah, it's toning down. It's getting a little flatter, uh, a little bit um, less dark, blackly intense. As they're drying, there is going to be okay, and it'll definitely be okay for the stream.
quickly. I'm expecting that the application of the epoxy rivulet, I don't know, I've got a couple of different ways of doing it that I put together during break. One is just, I think the first time I did it, it I just applied it with a toothpick and just kind of ran it down because it was, you know, pretty viscous. I run it down the center of the, uh, of the trough. It meandered a little bit. Sometimes it got, it wasn't necessarily continuous. Sometimes, you know, in a sewer, you get some spots where it, so the continuous rivulet and maybe it ponds up a little bit, that kind of thing. Um, and then I got a cotton swab. And I'm going to try both the non-cotton end. I took the cotton off because it's a little bigger than the toothpick and might hold a little more so it'll go more quickly. Um, and I trimmed the cotton way back on, on the other end and that might work pretty well because that will, that will hold some of the epoxy and act almost like a little brush. So try that too. And we'll, We'll see which technique works most quickly. So part of it is the aesthetic of making it look like a rivulet of sewerage going through the sewer, and the other part is to not be spending too much time on it. Four left. And then I'll bring the, the wall tiles out and start putting the high water mark on those. So whoever set up this camera over the weekend did a pretty good job, at least for this kind of work. Maybe not so good for detail work, like a minifig or something. Uh, but at least for this kind of work, a pretty good job of setting it up so things are easy to keep on camera. So I have a tendency to move things around, but in this case, I can keep them a little further away from me. I'll be getting up uh, to switch trays as I put this one aside and get out the tray of the balls. Using up the last little bits in the um, well there. Okay. So now we have a black rivulet down the center of the sewer tiles which, as they dry, look not too bad. And for me, not too bad it is a pretty good thing. Get to see the stream earlier. I will show you the mountain of wall tiles, including corners that need now to have their high watermark strike put on. Over from the tray to here so that I can put them back on the tray as they get done. Good. It attempts to leap up the bench or something. That's the 
professional way of uh, making space is to shove things aside and I get a shovel aside. Okay, so what I'm going for here is kind of like this, and I haven't done this. Nikki did that, so um, it's going here. That that went up. That went up too high. Sometimes the uh, I guess it has only, yeah, it kind of goes up there, but mainly it's right there. So it's going to be kind of like that, except, yeah, better. This, I think what I need to be doing is like a lot of horizontal brushing. I guess that's kind of what we're going for there, like that. We'll see. See if these look what, as they dry. The horizontal brushing wasn't wasn't the right thing. The the wiggling vertical kind of brushing seems to be the the way to go here. Um, anyway, yeah, they're going to be, it's all going to be very ragged. Very sewery. Neat. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be, I'm going to put it across the center there and then dab above and below. He did we're more uneven. But I'm not I'm not succeeding in getting that look. And maybe that is, maybe this is the way to go here. Sure. I just hope it ends up being okay. Yeah, it's a lot of tiles. I have no idea how big this dungeon thing is that we're going to be going into. I somehow have the sense that we'll be... You know, this is a tabletop gaming thing, right? I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting the feeling that this is going to cover the entire tabletop because there are a lot of tiles. There are... A hundred of these, this kind of flat floor like that, there's 144 of them, you know, and that's, that's a gross, it's a gross number. There's like 36 trough tiles. Yeah, I really don't know what to expect. There's just a lot of them. So maybe they, you know, maybe it's designed. I don't know what, what our DM Alexis is going to be doing to us. You know, maybe it's designed to be uh, more than one dungeon. 
you know, like we go from one one part to another or something. Um, I'm not really sure what to expect, except that it, there are so many of them. It's like we're going to be in the sewers for ever. You know, and granted, we, you know, our party has had some really interesting encounters in sewers in the past, including our favorite pastime, which is attempting to get through a barred barrier. Not a bard like nines, but a bard like bars, uh, iron bars, not a good bar like a uh, beer bar or a whiskey bar, but like bars that barred our way. We had a really good time trying to get through a passageway blocked by bars. And we tried everything, tried tunneling, tried bending, tried breaking. I think we even looked for explosives. <clears throat> and we spent so much time on that that eventually the DM, Alexis, our dungeon mistress, just broke, broke the, broke the ball and said, no, you can't get through. I, the omnipotent DM put bars on that passageway so that you would go the other way and not the way you're trying to go. Of course, we tried it again, you know, at least once just to see if that was true or not. And it was. We were not going to be permitted to get through that barred passageway. Um, But now it's become part of like the idiom of the show. Whenever the party meets up with a barred passageway, we have to spend an incredible amount of time attempting to get through it. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be a major feature of this dungeon or not. The first time we went down into a sewer, we didn't have sewer tiles. We just had a description of it. You know, so we had to imagine what it was like. And then we ended up building a sewer with these dungeon tiles, and that was pretty fun. But it was way smaller than this. I think, I think maybe the total was... 35 or 40 tiles. Now there's there's way more than that here, so I don't know. This could be just a maybe it'll be a gigantic sewer. I'm not sure what how it's gonna be. Be I'm painting them to be a little bit too uniform. But they're giving the impression, at least, of uh, black mold on the walls of this. It's the important thing. If we want, if we were to ever make these for like production, and we've talked about maybe doing that, if we were to like sell sewer tiles, I would be making sure that Nicole, who is the artist, would be the one who's actually doing the blending and the shading because although it might look a little bit like I know what I'm doing look a little bit like I know what I'm doing because I know what I'm doing just a little bit yeah we do have a big map space And because of the nature of these, they all kind of, you know, they hold together. We don't even have to have the grid underneath it because these these tiles provide their own one inch by one inch grid. That's a really cool feature about these these tiles we've been using for D and D is that um, they they not only look good, especially if somebody with talent paints them, but 
they carry with them there because they're they're designed for Dungeons and Dragons. They carry with them their one inch by one inch um, grid pattern, and so you don't have to use a tabletop grid when you use the tiles because it's built right in as a feature. Anyway. I think after all this work, the reaction is good enough for the show. If we were to sell them, we'd have somebody talented make them look good. Yeah, the walls are going a little bit more slowly than the troughs did because, you know, I'm just I'm trying to get. If I were trying to make them look even they would look really uneven. But if I'm trying to make them look uneven, uh, then, then they're turning out to be a little bit even. So anyway, I'm going to keep dabbing at them. It looks like I've got about half of these ones done. I never did count them. 20. Looks like there's 35 plus the. Well, yeah, there's 34 plus uh, the. This is where the barred gate is. These holes in here that you see is, are where the bars go. And then there's a lintel that goes across the top. And that's our barred passageway where we can't go. But that won't stop us from trying. Because Midnight Brunch, which is the name of our group, never lets an irrelevant digression go by. Yep, our favorite snack is the old red herring. We haven't had a dungeon crawl since we went through the mountains. And that was basically just on a map. This is this is going to be this is going to be the first time in a long time that we've actually featured one of our uh, dungeon tile dungeons. So during break, I was advised, oh, you should eat something. That was good advice that I did not follow. So if I start to fade out, it's because <laughs> I have no blood sugar. Yeah. Work first, eat later. Nutrition is, you know, optional. It's that kind of this is that kind of sweatshop that uh, that our DM runs is get those dungeon tiles done. You will likely survive to eat later. But this should be this should be pretty fun going through this. It's, Whatever it is, it's going to be very large and ever-changing and shifting. I'm guessing... I'm guessing we're going to, you know, just jump down into the sewers without, like, preparing anything. Like, maybe taking food or water or anything like that. That would be the way we do it. To ask the rats where the late, you know... Hey, where is... Nines can do that. Because nines can talk to animals. Hey, rats. 
we're the best restaurant around here. Say, well, what is it you want? We want food. Well, you know, you answer the best restaurant, but, you know, do you want, uh, you want like tacos? Do you want Thai? Sushi? Mm -hmm. It's hard to make a recommendation without knowing what kind of food you want. Oh, we want the best food. Find all about what the, the culinary offerings of the sewers are, I bet. Because I'm sure we're going to jump down there without without doing any kind of meaningful preparation. It would not be the way of Midnight Brunch to actually have a plan. We had a plan once. It was like a seven-point plan. And uh, it went off with practically without a hitch. It was really, I don't know, weird in a way. Because usually our plan is, uh, this is how we will start. I hope we are here to finish. And that's it, you know, that's the plan. Kind of like the new member of the group, Holwyn, Holwyn who is a, a journalist, but also a, kind of a novice member of the Thieves Guild. It always had a very good plan about how to get in, but never really had a good plan about how to get out. Fortunately, when Midnight Brunch did its big heist on The Voice, we had a very effective and elaborate plan on how to get out. I think it ended up destroying a third of an entire city, um, which, you know, was unfortunate. But uh, we did get out, so the plan worked. It wasn't all that great a city. DM hadn't created, I just mean the city that the DM created wasn't, you know, it wasn't a place you necessarily want to go out of your way to visit. Yeah. We talked about Mapo, we talked about uh, Supercar, talked about 1960s westerns, kind of. Each one had, had theme songs. Let's see your pasty. Do we have pasties? We <gasps> something we haven't done. We had pasties whenever we go searching for food. You know, we've been to uh, the Arturo Experience, which in fact had no food at all. I think that was part of the experience the lack of food and I would say that the lack of food was very effective because there was in fact no food oh I'm doing these I guess it I guess we haven't okay what I was checking was to see whether the black line went around the side or not and it makes sense that it doesn't that it doesn't go around the side um, because, you know, that's the side of the wall and the water wouldn't flow there. So even if the side of the wall shows, you know, during the stream, it would make sense that the, that the black mold didn't go there. Which is good because I've done like uh, 
dirty of these things, it feels like, and hadn't done size on any of them. It'd be most unfortunate to have to go back and redo all of that. Well, this band, I think this band is a little bigger than they were on the original tile. So I get one that's dried. That's kind of what they're looking like now after the black is dried. And it's not, I don't know, it's not as, depends on the angle. It's not quite as dark as it was on the original, but maybe it'll look good on camera. I hope so. I think he's got the dogs going again. So either someone is walking along the street or delivery or something. Or maybe sometimes they just see things that really aren't there. Or they'll see a, a dog way off in the distance or person hear something we can't hear. And then we'll get a little bark fest going. This one didn't last as long as it did just before the break. Um, yeah, so when I'm done with these, which will be a while yet, is I've got six walls and then the double wall so the equivalent of eight yet to go then I've got the corners many corners fortunately I kind can't cut corners in this process, I have to get them all done. To that, um, be going back to the sewer troughs and getting out the epoxy and starting to put epoxy sewage rivulets down the uh, a sewer if it doesn't have sewerage in it. Mm -hmm. Parla's journey there. <clears throat> yeah, my journey is you can eat when you're done. At least there's that promise of food at the end. Not unusual for me to skip lunch because there's always something that comes up, you know, between the morning coffee and the um, and dinner. Even though I'm retired and I really have no obligations, I mean, like a job, in a in a sense, I have a to-do list, but um, there's always something, and then it's like, oh. I don't, I don't think I ate anything today. Oh, but dinner is out. Wow, that was bad. I mean, it's not going to show very much up there, but I... Sometimes the, um, the black wash has this tendency of spattering when the cap is closed. It's been that way with every bottle that we've used. And it was no exception here. It just got all 
all over. It just splashed. Fortunately, it was far enough away from me that I don't have it all over my clothes. Yeah, it would not be good. And yeah, it's water soluble, but. Mm. Nonetheless, unless you catch that kind of thing right away. I don't know. I'm just not capable of giving the same look that Nicole got when she did these originally. Hopefully it's good enough. Good enough is good enough nowadays for this sort of thing. Um, yeah, this is where a, a pipe flows out through this hole. So it makes sense that there'd be this like rivulet of goo coming out of it. And I'm going to do that here. Hold it, the original, there was a it was kind of brown on either side of it from the rust. Um, and I think that's a really good effect, and so I might try to do that. It made sense that the pipe would put some rust out. I'm doing this, it almost feels like I'm done, but I'm only done with these particular kinds of walls. I have to do the corners yet. What did I count? Like 30 of them? 20. up here. See them all kind of piled up here. I'm putting these aside. I want to play with those a little bit more maybe. Carefully set them up in all sorts of haphazard pile. There's a haphazard pile of these. Let me see how these were done. Did, um, yeah, okay. So the inside is are these, okay, and then the outside wasn't done. So I'm going to do the same thing with these. Mm. Is um, do here and here. And down one twentieth. Two twentieths, which is one tenth, which is ten percent, which is moving right along. Three twentieths, which is a fraction that cannot be reduced without creating yet more decimals or fractions. Like one and a half tenths. And four twentieths. Four twentieths is a good number because even though it's not very far along, uh, 
the fifth, which is 20%, and 20% sounds like something. And even better, you just move on to 520s and you go to a quarter. I mean, just like that, you make a huge jump in the denominator, right? That got a quarter of a Sounds like it's almost done, even though it's not. Jump, which is to 30%, doesn't sound like much of an improvement at all. I don't know. Did Unrist, we did, did we go in the sewers in Unristo? I don't remember if we did that. Yeah, I think we, we went underground. I think we were in the sewers. I can't recall. They should have been clean because they hadn't been used in like a thousand years. The sewer bacteria should have done their job and finished them up. is two-fifths. Two-fifths is 40%. Somehow two-fifths doesn't sound like you're getting anywhere. You know, it, it should, because you're almost halfway, but two-fifths just doesn't, doesn't convey a sense of significant progress. The yeah, dragon families, you think that they could get, get enough of enough wizards to do that, that they wouldn't, that they would in fact not even need sewers because they would have enough magic going on so that the waste was like automatically transformed into, uh, I don't know, forsythia bushes or something, right? I mean, what are they using all their power and magic for if not to clean, have clean sewers? Maybe should maybe we should ask those questions as we as the party is forced to wander in the sewer in search of what we do not know, no doubt something dangerous. Um, we should be asking why there are sewers in, in the first place. We could probably go on for a good long time uh, dealing with the speculation around it, that kind of topic. I'm kind of, maybe I'm looking forward to that. It might be the kind of thing that also Ralph would would speculate about, would wonder about. Let's see, it's splattered again. Yeah. Is dragons are so special? Why do they still have sewers? And sewer workers. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's nothing more than a make work project. You know, that they don't have to have sewers, but they have sewers so that they can hire people to work in the sewers. And then they have to, you know, have a to-do about what the status of the people who work in the sewers is in the context of everything. Um, could be a whole sociological debate about... Um, Related, related to the construction and maintenance of sewers. At least it would give us something to do while we're wandering aimlessly lost, not having bothered to get a map. No, why would we do that? Wandering aimlessly about the sewers. Well, this is since I haven't been counting, which has been a good thing, instead of just speculating about the socioeconomics of the sewer system in uh, Jagmora. Um, yeah, it's been moving along. I've got six left after this. 
which means I've done 14, which means I've done what, 7 tenths? Now oh, 70%, that's something. That's not bad. Um, yeah, I'm not, I might not have to go too terribly extra timely today because um, I've got like five of these left. Only 25% uh, only left. So I'm 75% done. Only 25% of these corners left. And then I want to do a little touch up with some brown wash on the uh, drain sections because as I looked at the original, um, the rust from the pipe showed. I'm going to do that. And then I can get right to the epoxy rivulets. And we'll see how that goes. I'm not sure. I haven't done one in a long time since I did the originals. <laughs> and that was in a different technique for a different purpose. And the last of the batch. Oh, and I got a—I squeezed out way too much uh, black wash there. And after I'm done with this, I'm going to make a real quick look around to make sure I didn't miss anything because this went surprisingly quickly. But now it looks like uh, looks like they're done, and this is what they look like. You know, not, a, not as good as the originals, and not as streaky, especially the green stuff should be streakier. But, you know, that would be a, that would be a final touch-up if I were to go through and get the green wash out and just do more streakiness. So I'm going to wash this off. Good deal of cleaning. There's a lot of black wash in the brush. Um, I'm going to get the brown out again, just real quickly. Just a little switch there. And what I want to try to do, let me just grab one of these brushes, is if I looked at one of the originals, which again is better, there's, see where the pipe is? Just do that, right? And then, um... Yeah, so I want to get rust here. Rust dripping down the sides. Where the pipe is. And I already rusted the pipe. I have the black wash out and I looked at the pipe um, it actually needs to be black blackened where the slime pours out and this doesn't again come close to looking as good as it did when Nicole did one of these but it is as good as I can get it. It's less, much less artistically skilled. Okay, and then the bottom of the pipe. I 
can't see it because it's inside the pipe, but the pipe there is, that's where the slime comes out. Take the time since the, we have some brown wash is um, a little more rust on it because it doesn't look quite as quite rusty enough. Sit in the water for a bit. I've got this brown wash out, and what I want is. You can see it's kind of rusty, but it wouldn't hurt to have some spots, especially in the top where it's more visible. That would that would just even like rustier. Let's put it on here, and you know, as it dries, it'll just uh, be rustier. Can't have too much rust and slime in a sewer. I'm just hoping that that's just enough rust and slime. Okay, now what needs to be done, I'm going to put these over with the other walls. What needs to be done is I need to take this tray over to the shelf without spilling it. Yes, that's clean. And I'm going to bring over the troughs and I'm going to attempt to do that to them. need this uh, high-tech stuff here is a mixing surface for the epoxy it's a 30 minute epoxy squeeze out equal portions of the hardener and the epoxy and uh, make a rivulet didn't hear anything fall on the floor Okay. I'm going to okay my tools here these are my tools I've got toothpicks that I will be using um, I've got a cotton swab which I for which I took off the cotton because it gives me a little bit bigger th thing to work with and cotton swab where I got rid of most of the cotton that might work with the epoxy um, especially if I kind of dab it and don't get it on too thick and I don't know how this is going to work we'll see I'm going to be mixing much larger portion of epoxy than I usually do because usually I'm just attaching tiny bits and we've been using five minute epoxy so you can't mix too much actually at once because it sets up in fact I'm gonna do two two modestly sized ones it's just easier to match quantities when they're about that size about the size of like a nickel that was the epoxy rosin, and this is the hardener. And the pleasant thing about this 30 minute epoxy is that the hardener does not smell nearly as bad as the five minute epoxy. The hardener for that 
really, really stinks. This is this is the precise way of measuring. Just like, do they look like they're about the same size? And if they do, then uh, then they are. So there. Um, so let's mix this one first. Yep. I don't know how this is going to go. To be honest, I did those others long, so long ago that I can't really remember what I did. I think I used a toothpick um, to make the little rivulet. So maybe we'll start with that. Let's take one. We're going to take one. All right, what can go wrong? And I always want to start in the center because these have to flow into each other. And you want, it doesn't much matter what happens in the middle. Okay. That is not really a concern, but they have to be in the middle at the ends so that they match up. Okay. So that's a, you know, that's a pretty decent random flow of goo using the toothpick. Now I'm going to just because I want to try it, I'm going to use the um, the non cotton end, and that's not bad. Get a little thicker, a little thicker that way. That seems to work as well. I'm not going to try it with the uh, cotton end. I think it'll just, it'll be, um, just be too dangerous to do that. It'll, it'll be too much epoxy on the, on the stick. And, you know, it's okay. I, to have like a little break in the rivulet, maybe a little ponding. I want each one to look different from the next. Just do kind of a continuous flow. Because sometimes they just do that. They'll just flow nice and continuously all the way across. same place. <laughs> I've been setting them up here so you can kind of see how they're looking, but I am going to have to, um, and I might just leave a few of them up there. Yeah, maybe I'll just leave like a row. You could go down. Whoa, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> As I picked them up, they all wanted to flop over. Because the surface I've got these on is not quite... Yeah, it's not even. Okay, so there's five of them. So you can kind of see how how this is looking and I've got a half hour for this to set up. It is pretty viscous, uh, but it's still workable. I'm supposed to have 30 minutes, not five. And so I should be able to get a lot of these done before it becomes unworkable. We will see.
is there yet to chat about? I can't really think of anything right now. I'm going to put a puddle in this one. This one's going to have a puddle. Okay, because... Why not? The sewage. I'm sewage. I can do what I want. If I want to puddle up here, I'm going to puddle up here. What will you do about it? The most you can do about it is walk around the puddle. If you don't want to walk through the puddle, then that's your choice. Yeah, well, this is not bad. I've got my, this is number 10. I'm getting 10 of these done. And I still have quite a lot of this epoxy and it's sticky. Which, you know, there's some benefit to the stickiness because it, you know, it'll stay where I put it. Um, but it's not set up. If this were the five minute epoxy, it would be unusable by now. Well, watchdog is watching something else now. Downside of the stickiness is that you can get these strings. Yeah, I'm going to come really close to finishing at around two. That's kind of a surprise, really. Um, I thought I'd be going on like an hour more. I'd have to put in too much overtime today and still get this done. Which means that um, that takes us back to the question of Submarine Friday or not. So far, there has been one vote. I won't disclose that if you haven't been paying attention, because I wouldn't want to influence those who have not yet voted. You know, that's why they don't announce results until after the polls are closed. They used to do that. You know, when you get, like, I think that, like, there was one national election. It's like, well, yeah, the election's already decided, and California's votes aren't in yet. And uh, the... Polls were scheduled to be open for like another three hours or something. It's like, well, why bother? Why bother voting now if it's already over? So now, no, the, the decision was made not to announce results until the polls are closed. So that the results that have already come in don't influence whether anybody else bothers to vote or not. So there's been one, one vote in the question of Submarine Friday or not. Those of you who are still in chat, this is your opportunity to weigh in and influence decision. Not influence the decision. Your vote will actually decide the decision. It will be a desiderator. It's a real word, by the way. Now it is. It's a real Dyson Dungeons word. You can be a desiderator. No opinions? Disappointing. You've got until I'm done to um, to decide whether uh, we do submarines on Friday or 
or a, a mini fig. shall remain open for another 19 trough tiles. I think I've got enough goo here kind of spread out, but enough goo here to get one more done. This one is going to have a puddle in it. Broken rivulet, and then it kind of dribbles out there. Okay, um, yep, I'm going to wipe this off a little bit, it's gooing up. And I'm going to take this and mix the next batch, which I had already squeezed out. Until they are mixed together, they can both sit there for a good long time without forming a chemical reaction. And they are mixed together, they harden into a very, uh, this is supposed to be like the best adhesive of epoxies, the slow cure. The slower it cures, the harder it holds. Okay, um, yep. So I'll continue the process of putting uh, rivulets of epoxy down the troughs. continue to ask the question because I'm not getting any kind of responses from people in chat. Can we have a submarine Friday this week? It needs to have just this little bit of a drizzle. Some of the others have had a lot of um, a lot of liquid in them. I want to make a couple that have hardly any. Not in an effort to save epoxy, but just for variety. Because it makes sense that, you know, maybe this is raised up a little bit. Maybe there's air blowing on it. There could be all sorts of reasons why there is there are some tiles that have hardly any liquid flowing through them. So just so that the DM has some options when setting up the, dun the dungeon about the appearance, at least some that are just sort of, you know, not much. And then there are others that have like rivers flowing through them. It stays liquid a little longer, so yeah, seems to spread out a little more than, um, than the five minute stuff did.
you know, it's a good idea to use the uh, the 30 minute on this because you can ju just get a lot further with uh, just a couple of mixes of it. nice thing about this kind of thing is that none of this has had to have a lot of precision. I appreciate that. This Q-tip stick has worked pretty well in terms of the quantity it puts on. Got um, seven left. So yeah, I'm actually going to finish on time. I am shocked. I am shocked, 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 surprised at my at how I was able to get all this this done in uh, one stream. When I started this, it just I didn't think it was going to be possible because there's so many tiles. And they're coming out looking okay. I mean, I would say these these are not um, these are not sale quality. Okay. Although I don't know, maybe we'll maybe we will. You know, there's always something to be said for selling props. So for a real fan of Dyson Dungeons, having a prop, a show used prop. And as I said, the, the real real props are often not any, you know, they're sometimes really kind of cheap and scuzzy looking because that's how they appear on camera. They're not pieces of art. They are just things that are supposed to look good um, on camera. But maybe, you know, get a certificate of authenticity. That would be cool, right? You can get a certificate of authenticity. This prop was used on episode whatever, 8074 or whatever. I'm not sure. Right now, um, you know, a certificate of authenticity. It could even be autographed by the cast. Uh huh. And so, even though these aren't like display quality like a display model quality um they are they are actually used on the show props i think that i think that's pretty special that's special so i'm gonna i'm gonna suggest that and and you can you can uh then go on youtube and actually see them constructed so you know when and how they were made and why. But if I promised, I'm just I'm speculating about something that might possibly be done. Yeah, I probably said something earlier about something that I can't remember. What was it? Do you remember? This is the last one. This is going to be the end. The end of relaxing epoxy spreading with Dyson Dungeons today. Put these on the tray and I'm going to bring it up so people can look at it.
first, I must set these down and get it out of the way because this is, uh, if this gets on, on things, it gets really messy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here, here we have 36 uh, sewer troughs with uh, all sorts of you know, sewerage now running through them. Sometimes spread out, sometimes thick, sometimes thin, uh, giving our DM all sorts of options in terms of how to set these up. And um, uh, there it is. So those are the sewer troughs, and over there are all the walls that were done. And from a distance, from a distance they look okay, which is good because if you watch Dyson Dungeons, you're going to be seeing them from a distance. You know, the distance that the camera puts on. Um, so, time for an ad read, right? Thank you, Dark. Um, the ad read, I have to do that. It wouldn't be right for me not to say thank you to everybody who is a follower and a subscriber. If you want to really help out, um, you can go to patreon.com slash dice and dungeons and become a patron. If you become a patron, you get access to our warm ups, which are hilarious and wonderful. And they run anywhere from like three minutes to seven or eight, maybe. Um, I really appreciate that. So I know that they're, you know, these are just not, they're just not the quality that you might get uh, from a talented painter, but they are adequate. I have done adequate work. Yeah, so if you're not a follower or a subscriber, please consider becoming one. And again, patreon.com slash Dyson Dungeons is always available to anybody who wants to support the Dyson Dungeons movement. Um, I will be back on Friday. The vote today has been unanimous. Okay. The vote today has been unanimous. We are going to have Submarine Friday this week. I'm looking forward to that because I really want to accomplish something on this submarine. And I've been working on it for a month now, a month of Wednesdays, and have barely gotten anywhere along. So I'm hoping to make some good progress this coming Friday on Submarine Friday, the special edition. And then next week, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, from more or less 10 until more or less 2 with a break in between. We'll be doing more relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. Now that these are done and I only get to do the submarine one day a week, I really don't know what I'll be doing next week. I don't. I know that I've got um, one minifig yet to finish and another one uh, that I haven't really started yet that has a broken sword. So I get to make yet another toothpick sword. I know it's always great fun watching me fabricate swords out of toothpicks and then boxing, contact cementing them on. Uh, done that, what, three times, maybe four times already. Three of which actually turned out pretty well, one of which was adequate. Um, yeah, but anyway, we're going to have Submarine Friday. Next week, there will be Submarine Wednesday, and on Monday and Friday, there will be Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons, something not a submarine. Uh, probably having to do with Dungeons and Dragons of some sort. There might be more minifigs. There might just be the two that I need to finish up. I don't know. We will find out. Thanks so much for watching. Um, those of you who are catching this on YouTube, thanks for watching it there. And I will see you... Oh, I've got five minutes left. I'm going to end early today. Uh, I will see you on Monday at around 10. No, I will see you on Friday around 10. Also on Monday. Uh, yeah, low blood sugar. You can tell. There is low blood sugar going on here. Uh, oftentimes at the end of the stream when I don't have lunch, which is always... Sometimes it gets a little bit ragged near the end and I forget my time and place. But... I will see you at Submarine Moist and Poopy um, 
that's what we were going for. We were going for night mice moist mice and poopsy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to stop talking because I can't anymore. Submarine Friday, see you about ten. Thank you. Dyson Dungeons saying have a good day. <laughs>